Hey folks, Ray DC Rainmaker.com here. Today we're kicking off 2019 with the first major cycling tech news of the year. And this is the SRAM Red ETAP Access. Uh, now, Access is spelled A X S uh, because they're taking cues from Wahoo on dropping vowels and just going with all like the simple stuff there. Uh, but Access is what it is, and Access is more than just a marketing thing, though it is kind of a marketing thing. Instead, it's about the entire ecosystem uh, from a technology standpoint. Uh, so it's what's connecting all these components together. And in the past, that was called ETAP. ETAP, and that's still true today as well. On the roadside, it's still branded ETAP, but behind the scenes, this whole platform is access. It's Bluetooth smart connected uh, shifters, it's Bluetooth smart connected dropper posts. Um, all these things are starting to kind of pull together into a, a single platform. Now, from a non-technology standpoint, the big thing that you're probably going to hear a lot about is the shift to 12 speed, um, in particular for the road side, which is the first time we've seen SRAM do that. But it's more important than that a lot. In fact, it's really more about gearing and getting a larger range from the different gearing combinations that are on this entire platform. Uh, and when SRAM talks about, they've kind of divided them into three basic buckets. The first one is the pro and triathlon side of things. The second is for the road. And the third is what is effectively gravel. Each of those options offers two by and by two Two by what I mean there is simply that your front chain ring has two rings uh, versus one by what's over there on that uh, mountain bike is a single chain ring in the front. Uh, and now for each of these combinations, there's also a one by option as well. We're going to talk tech here outside uh, from all of like the gadget standpoint because that's why you're here, of course. It's I'm, I do gadget stuff, and we're going to talk about access and kind of how all the different pieces fall together and how they work together, not just on the SRAM platform, but how they pull into third parties as well. Um, but before we do that, or before we get to that point, if you're finding this video useful, whack that like button there or hit the subscribe button. It really helps out the channel here quite a bit, uh, so I appreciate that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, all these components are connected via Bluetooth Smart, but not necessarily to each other via Bluetooth Smart. Um, so in the past, SRAM had their ETAP network that connected all of this stuff together, uh, and it made it so that it was effectively secure. In other words, you couldn't go ahead and have these shifters uh, paired to two different uh, derailers in the past. So like if someone is at a Tour de France starting area, they couldn't go ahead and take over one of those pro riders' bikes. Everything is kind of controlled so that you connect these shifters up here wirelessly um, to your derailleur, you that physically are pressing the button right there and that's all controlled there and all that remains the same here none of that changes the difference is that you can also read configuration information from a smartphone with their access app uh, so fairly similar to what Shimano's done uh, with their app as well in terms of being able to pull that information in uh, now in order to keep that secure the phone can only connect or the entire platform here can only connect one phone device at a time so in other words if a you know, mechanic, a protein mechanic has connected their phone into the system, then that is a system, that is a phone that is authorized to make changes to go ahead and connect to the system. They cannot go ahead and have another phone. So a fan nearby looking at that protein rider's bike can't simply connect into it uh, and make any changes. It has to be authorized via pressing this physical button right there, which goes ahead and keeps people from, from doing bad things. Now, from an electronic side of things, uh, SRAM says that ETAP with access is a tiny bit faster on two by uh, and a fair bit faster on one by. And part of that comes from the fact that now with the one by setup, over, like over there, uh, it's not looking for that secondary uh, button press, the, the two button press there, to determine whether or not it shifts. It's just simply going ahead and shifting right away. Practically speaking, it didn't really notice any difference. For me, like on my ETAP bike that I have uh, at home, it's is fast enough for me. I know there are some people that have debates on whether or not DI2 is faster, ETAP is faster. I think for like 99.99% of people out there, you would probably never notice. Uh, even like within the cycling journalism community, I talk to different people and they're like, yeah, I noticed, no, I didn't notice, I don't know, maybe I think this one's faster, that one's faster really you probably won't notice okay so now let's take a bit of a look at the new access app uh, now this app is covering all of SRAM's digital devices here on the bike uh, so for example it's going to cover the quark power meter soon it'll cover the tire whiz uh, those are the tire pressure sensors that came out last year uh, it'll also cover the uh, shock whiz as well from SRAM so everything is basically covered by this app so I've got to open up right here you can add multiple bikes into it and you can add photos of those bikes you can see there's that photo of this foil bike right here uh, if I go up here you'll see the stump jumper over there, add it in there. So you can add all of these different bikes into it and then go ahead and manage those bikes as single entities. Uh, so we'll cl click on the connect option there. In fact, it's already connected up um, for my bike right there. And first we're gonna go ahead and click on settings. 
and pull that open. Uh, and you can see that enhanced mode is turned off right now. Uh, enhanced mode is probably one of the big ticket items uh, on this new ETAP system uh, that's different from the past uh, and starts to put SRAM into the same category from like a electronic control configuration, et cetera, standpoint that Shimano has. Uh, and so there's two enhanced modes and you can of course turn these off as you just saw right there, I turned them on. Uh, number one is compensating and number two is sequential. Uh, so what compensating does is that when I go ahead and shift between the small ring in the front, the big ring in the front there, it goes and adds an extra cog or two in the back there on the cassette. Uh, so basically instead of having a huge jump when you go ahead and uh, make that front derailleur shift, it goes and kind of makes a little bit smaller. And you can see there's those two options right there uh, for one cog or two cog maximum. So you can choose whether or not it's going to be a single um, cog or a double cog shift. And there's a bunch, a bunch of math tables that um, SRAM has so you can kind of mentally see where that is, or you can just simply trust in their math and let them do the thing. Or again, you can turn it off. This isn't something you have to have if you if you don't want to have it. Uh, sequential is much more like the uh, synchro shift that you would have had from Shimano, where you go ahead and just shifting up and down, and it automatically figures out where to shift the front and the back. So I use the left hand side here, and that's configurable as well. The left hand side here to make life easier, and so that would go ahead and shift down the cassette. And when it gets to that point where it makes sense to go ahead and shift the front, it'll do that as well. And then on the inverse side of that, as I go back up to make things harder. Uh, it does the exact same thing where it shifts the front and the back at the right spot to go ahead and uh, make that shift. And you can in fact see when it's going down shifting or up shifting exactly where it's going to make that shift and the changes are shown in the app here. Note that it is different between going up shifting and down shifting. So it doesn't actually shift at the exact same spot um, combination wise on both directions. So that's kind of a neat little uh, tidbit there. Multi-shift is also configurable down here at the bottom as well. And if we go back up to the top there, you can see where I can change the cassette that's in here. So one of the three different cassette options that uh, SRAM offers, I can set that and configure that there. And that's important because again, if you're having it kind of automatically figure out the best point uh, to make that shift, if these cassettes are incorrect, then your shifting is going to be incorrect as well. So going back out of the drivetrain settings there, uh, we'll go into one of the next options. So I'll click configure controls and I'm going to choose the correct bike. So there we go. Configure controls. And this is where I can change any of the things that I can press buttons on here, what they do. Uh, so, you know, the obvious one, if I were to use my, my left uh, controller here is to make it easier. And then the obvious one on the right side is to make this more difficult um, from a uh, gearing standpoint. But in reality, I could change that to be opposites if I wanted to. I just would hit the swap button right there and it would confirm that and it would swap that around. It would also swap any ETAP clips that are connected as well. As you saw the error message or the warning message right there pop up saying, it would do that. Uh, in terms of combo actions, that's the combination accident list right there. That's when I press both buttons at the same time together, what action I'll do. So I can click on that and say, instead of doing a front shift, it'll do a down shift or an up shift. Or if I had paired in the stump jumper over there, uh, the seat post there, I could actually go up and down on that also. So you have a lot of kind of options there in terms of how you configure this. And you can see as I go down there, these are the auxiliary controls for the blips. I can configure those differently. Um, so I can click on this one right here. And again, which actions go into that. Uh, so a ton of options to, to do that. I'm going to swap these back here before I forget because I'll be out rotting and it'll, it'll be kind of sucky if I'm the opposites of what I expected. Finally, last but not least, you'll see quark in the menu here as well, my quark power meter. So down there at the bottom, uh, it's got it listed there and this is added to this particular bike. You can of course add different power meters, different bikes. So you again, creating that whole concept of a single cohesive digital unit of your, your bike here. I click on the uh, unit itself and then there I can see firmware updates at the top. I can see power meter settings. Uh, so this is the exact same properties and functions that were in the old Calvin app, just simply brought into here as well. Um, the one new bit that you're seeing there is the revolution shown at the top there, uh, 1471. Uh, and that's part of some of the new features that Quark is looking to bring into this app by the time it launches here, which is when you're seeing this video, um, which is number one, revolutions, number two, uh, battery voltage. And then coming in the April timeframe, they're going to bring in the ability to do a fully automatic zero. And so right now when you, it's a bit of a manual process to zero a quirk, um, whereas they want to get to the point where it's just completely automatic. It just happens all the time. You never, ever think about it. Uh, and so that's something they're working on right now. And of course, zeroing is about the kind of the calibration of your power meter, um, you know, and, and power meter circles, you wouldn't really call zero calibration because it's technically different. But for most people, it's just calibrating your power meter. So that's always correct all the time, as opposed to having to do a zero, like for big temperature shifts or things like that. 
Now you may be wondering why RevCamp would be interesting, uh, and that's actually kind of getting a little bit to the larger strategy of what SRAM's doing with Access. Uh, and some of that they, they haven't been able to disclose today, but it's kind of coming down the road. But if you think about RevCount, RevCount is telling you essentially how often you're using your bike, not in terms of miles, but actual like pedal strokes. And that gets into things like components such as wear and tear on the chain and, and other things down in that general region. And that's where Quark and SRAM and, and kind of all the, the digital entities at SRAM are looking to figure out how to pull that stuff together. Um, and, and you know, as a bit of a hint at that, you may have seen the, the posting, uh, the job posting from Quark back a few weeks ago about the kind of cycling analytic platform as, as the job description said. That's probably giving a little bit of a hint of what's coming down the road. It's definitely super cool stuff. Again, I can't unfortunately say anything about it other than it's cool. So hang tight there for down the road somewhere. Um, kind of neat stuff to check out. So what are one of the downsides of the entire new uh, Red ETAP setup? Well, it's actually trainer incompatibility. Uh, so if you've got an expensive direct drive trainer, like for example, a Wahoo Kicker, a Tax Neo, things like that, um, where you go ahead and you take your rear wheel off the uh, bike and you put your bike on the trainer itself, that's not going to work today. There are no direct drive trainers on the market today that are compatible um, with this particular design. So that is a bit of a challenge. Now, of course, if you have something like a wheel on trainer, uh, for example, a Wahoo Kicker Snap or something where you leave this back wheel on, same goes for rollers, you're totally fine. Uh, now, it sounds like Wahoo is working on compatibility with this, which requires swapping out the free hub. The free hub is the thing in the back of your trainer that you stick the cassette on, uh, and that needs to be an XDR compatible free hub. I'll put a link down below in the review as well as the trainers on the screen right now as to who is um, claimed compatibility or planned compatibility. Uh, but uh, hopefully we'll see, you know, over the next few months, a bunch more companies come on board with that and go ahead and announce kind of a solution for folks that are wanting to pick up this uh, bike and all those components today. Speaking of which, let's kind of wrap things up with pricing. Uh, I will draw pricing on the screen right now. Uh, keep in mind, there's lots of pricing, lots of currencies, all that kind of stuff. All of this is linked in the description on the bottom there uh, with all the numbers. So you can see all the numbers that you want to see. You probably actually don't want to see them because this is pretty expensive but you can see them. Uh, now availability, that's a better story than pricing. Availability is effectively today. Uh, so SRAM is doing like Apple style. It's actually even better than Apple because Apple usually waits like a week or so. Um, but that same concept of it's here today. Uh, so they have thousands of bikes waiting in distributors with a bunch of different bike manufacturers and brands. They also have thousands of kits waiting to go out with those distributors so that you can basically pick this up from your bike retailer, bike shop, whoever, in likely the next couple of days uh, for at least the most popular components. There are some things that may take a little bit of time to kind of clear through, um, but that's a huge shift from the path past as well as a huge shift from even what Shimano's done where things are announced and they take like a year before they finally catch up. Uh, so hopefully that'll work out. I'm looking forward uh, to checking things out. Uh, also looking forward to riding this in more depth over the next couple of months or at some point down the road uh, and kind of doing a full nth review. This is definitely just a little bit of a, a teaser of things after a couple hours of riding around the desert here. Anyways, if you found this interesting, definitely check out the full post in the description there. Tons more tech details and photos. It's basically like bike porn for SRAM ET tap access type stuff um, or just simply whack the like button or the subscribe button. I appreciate it. Have a good one.